Hey everybody, Wyatt Derp here. Today we are going to be doing that joystick video that I have promised you for so long. So many of you guys have had questions about my particular setup or you you were having issues with yours or maybe how to set a new one up. So today what we're going to go over, we're going to go over my particular equipment that I have, how I have it set up and why I have it set up that way. Uh, we're going to go over some ways to set your controls up in the games uh, using the wizard and manual setup and importing and exporting configurations. And then we're going to go over just some little tips and tricks that I've learned. And hopefully once this is all done, you will be very comfortable with setting your joystick up. You will have your questions answered. But if not, feel free to message me or comment and I will be happy to help you. So the joystick that I have, I have the Thrustmaster T-Flight HOTUS X. HOTUS stands for Hands on Throttle and Stick. Let me show you. It is a two-part joystick. Let me back this away just a little here. And if you look here. It can snap together or it can come apart. I prefer to play with it apart because I can spread it out and it feels a little more natural on my armrest. Uh, so the first part is the joystick. That's obviously where the magic happens for War Thunder. Uh, this area has the yoke or stick, depending on your terminology. You've got the trigger right here. You've got two buttons on the back side here uh, on the top along with the POV head. POV is the point of view hat. That'll allow you to hit left on the POV hat and you're going to look left. You hit right, you're going to look right. It's handy for people that may not have a track IR setup or don't like using mouse free look. I use mouse free look sometimes, but when I'm in combat, it's nice to be able to not have to move my hand and be able to look up or, you know, look left or right and try and find a target. There are two buttons on the base here uh, for mapping and presets. It's used outside of War Thunder, because War Thunder, you can actually back up all your config files, and we'll go over that in a minute. So it's another nice utility that this joystick has for maybe games other than War Thunder. Uh, there is one other button right here on the side, uh, kind of if you were to take your, tr your finger off the trigger and have good uh, trigger control, uh, you, that's going to be button three. Uh, one last part here on the bottom is you have this little round spot. And what this is, this is a tensioning screw and you can loosen it all the way or you can tighten it all the way and what it does is it adjusts the tension on the joystick so see here we get pretty easy to move we'll tighten it all the way down there we go not quite so easy to move now which is a good thing for me at least you have the throttle quadrant and the throttle quadrant is just absolutely amazing to have. If you've never flown with a throttle quadrant, I highly recommend it, especially in War Thunder. Uh, you guys know when you know you go to war emergency power, things overheat very quickly. It's very nice to be able to have accurate throttle control without the keyboard, and it makes life a ton easier. It helps that there's all these fancy buttons on here, too. So on the base, you have two buttons right here, and then you've got a uh, third here, the home button, uh, turn red or green I really that's all the features I know about it uh, I've had this joystick for so long and don't really not entirely sure of the function of that button. I've never really used it uh, the two that are on here for worth under a map for map and scoreboard on the throttle quadrant itself you have four where your thumb rests so if I'm holding it like this see where my thumb is right here I have access to all four of those buttons with very little movement of my hand and then on the back side here where the other side of my hand rests I have two buttons right here and then I have a rocker switch. Oh, one, one thing I almost forgot. The joystick itself here has a twist axis. So in addition to your normal X and Y, you have a Z axis for twist. So the way I have this joystick set up, <clears throat> typical flight controls for X and Y axis. Z is set to rudder. I don't have a set of rudder pedals. I will be getting a set of rudder pedals soon. And what that allows me to do is if I want to do, you know, a quick roll, I can just, you know, twist over whatever direction. And it's very handy, especially in simulator when I'm taking off, uh, especially flying Germans, you have to apply right rudder on takeoff. And I'm not entirely sure if all the aircraft are like that. I know some of the Japanese are as well, uh, but it's very handy to, you know, be able to do that. I've kind of got the muscle memory down, so it's not too big of a deal and it's handy to have. On the trigger, that's set to my small caliber guns. Now, I'd have to double check the defaults, but I'm pretty sure when you do the wizard on this, it defaults to all your guns, just like pointing and clicking with your mouse. And for me, I don't like that. I like being able to aim with my small caliber guns, the 30s, the 50s, the 13 millimeters, something like that, 
And then I have my cannon actually set to the red and black button here, button two. Now the reason I do that is a lot of the planes come with a lot of machine guns and not very much cannon ammo, especially for Germany. So, you know, if you've got 1,000 rounds of 792 MG ammo, but you've only got 120 cannon rounds, you can use that small caliber ammo to actually do your fine aiming for you. And then once you start getting hits, then you lock them in and hammer down with the cannon. And it makes it, it, it's very efficient for using your ammo. Especially, like I say, when you're playing with limited ammo, when it's not arcade, when you're in realistic battles or simulator battles. You know, it's the difference between, well, crap, I blew all my, I blew all my ammo on one kill and now I got to go back to base. Or, hey, I got three kills and I was able to win the match for us because I was the last one left alive and I didn't have to go back to base and get trapped. So, <clears throat> excuse me. That is the joystick portion. Now on the throttle, oh, sorry, no, it's not the joystick portion. Bombs, rockets, and then, of course, the POV head, the directions I was telling you about. Now we're done with the joystick. So for the throttle quadrant, uh, what I have, I don't actually have this rocker assigned to anything yet. What I'm going to be doing with it is assigning it to trim. Uh, you just set up the axis, and we'll go over that in a minute. Uh, these two buttons, uh, the lower one is flaps, the upper one is landing gear, and I'm actually thinking of taking the landing gear one off and mapping something else to this, uh, because I don't really need the landing gear in a hurry. You know, I can I can top gun it and hit the brakes and it'll fly right by, in a manner of speaking. You can deploy your landing gear and then your flaps, and you will bleed airspeed very, very quickly, and a lot of times I'll overshoot. What it can also do is put you in a bad situation very quickly and you'll lose a lot of energy. And I've hit the landing gear button before in the middle of a fight. So it's not it's not necessarily a good thing to do. So I think I may remap that to the keyboard and use that for cycling targets or something like that. Uh, for these four buttons over here, uh, this farther back one is select target. And then for these three, I have assigned um, follow target. So basically it's a... Uh, from my perspective, I'm looking up at the target, and that's what my view is centered on. So say the guy is at 12 o'clock high, I hit that button, now my pilot's looking up, and slowly as I bring the plane around to him, then my cockpit comes into view. It's very, very nice to have if you have one target and you don't want to lose track of them. Uh, unfortunately, it's not that good in simulator because you can't lock in two targets, but for realistic battles, it's very, very awesome, and I highly recommend using it. I also have on here Zoom. And zoom is very nice for lining up, say, head-on passes or a long strafing run if you're using a, say, HS-129 with the 50mm cannons. So you can, do, you can do a lot with these buttons. And that's just my particular setup. And like I said, the two down on the base, that is map and scoreboard. And they're nice to be able to check, especially the scoreboard, so you can see who's left alive in the round. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the map, you know, you can pull it up real quick as soon as somebody gives a call out and look and see where on the map the call out is. So, without further ado, that is my setup. Let's go ahead and get into configuring everything with the wizard. So, we are going to go to menu and controls. Now, if you'll see here, I have everything cleared out. Why I cleared everything out was so that I could show you guys how to do a backup of the controls and it does it automatically for you when it configures however it's always nice before you mess with the controls and do everything else go ahead and save your configuration so that if anything happens to it it's covered and you can just load the old configuration so since I cleared everything out all I would need to do is go down here to go to import from file and it takes you to your steam folder or wherever you have War Thunder installed at and that file that you named will be right there for you to access. It's a, I believe it's a .blk extension. So, <clears throat> all you would do to export it is you click here, the little save icon, the floppy disk, and export to file. So, what I did, I hit clear all, we'll go ahead and do it again. Do you want to delete all control settings? Yes. Uh, and it's going to ask you which type do you want to configure your controls. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel for now because I want to show you guys the wizard first. So the control setup wizard is an absolutely amazing idea. If any of you guys remember the old, old Windows setup, you had to go in, you had to manually calibrate your joystick, you had to make sure the drivers were loaded, and you had to tweak it within Windows and then tweak it within the game. And that just wasn't any fun. It was, you know, it was very, very exhausting just to try and make a 
joystick work. And some joysticks didn't want to work with certain games because of that. Well, Gaijin has done a very nice thing with the Control Setup Wizard. And what they've done is we're going to go ahead and select Air. And so right now it says Controller Layout Custom Controls. We click where it says Custom Controls. And you have your keyboard and mouse options. You can play with a 360 controller. Or they have all of these wonderful joysticks listed right here. So the Satec X52, the X52 Pro, the Evo Force, and down here for me, the Thrustmaster HOTUS X. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Select Layout. Now, if you see, it auto-populated the entire layout, which is awesome. You know, like I said, there's all your work done right there for you. Now, what we were talking about here, so if you see small caliber guns, large caliber guns, additional guns, that all got defaulted to button one. So that would be one of the first things I changed. Uh, so the nice thing about the wizard is you can go in, you can set everything up right there with a couple button clicks, and it's done. It's calibrated. You should be good to go. Unfortunately, the wizard has some issues. And I can't say for sure if this is with any other joysticks. However, with the Thrustmaster HOTUS, what it does is it will actually assign hidden functions to different buttons that you do not have a way to clear unless you clear the controls, unless you do this right here. And I'll give you an example. So one of my clanmates has the exact same joystick, and he went ahead and did the setup wizard. I, I did mine manually because I'm, I've been a flight sim player for years. I know exactly what controls I want where. So what happened was he mapped his out the way I did mine. He just did the wizard first. So this button right here was cannon. Well, unfortunately, what it was also doing was pulling up his escape menu every time he fired. So you can imagine how frustrating that is when you're trying to shoot down an aircraft and suddenly your escape menu pops up and says, oh, hey, controls, options, exit, what do you want to do? And there was no way to clear it. And even when he separated, when he combined the buttons back after separating them, now whenever he pulled the trigger for any of the guns, the menu came up. And the only way he cleared it was by manually setting up the controls. So keep that in mind when you're using the wizard. If you are starting to have random issues like that, go ahead, back everything up, but do a quick manual config to see if that solves some of your issues, because I would be willing to bet that it, it very well could. So, well, all you do for manual, manual is actually exceptionally easy, it's just time consuming. And, you know, I'd, it might not seem like the the gains would be that rewarding, but let me go ahead and say this, having done the wizard and having set up manual, especially when you get into realistic battles and simulator battles, there are more controls than what the wizard set up that you need. So if we go to full real controls, for example, now you see the full aerodynamics, elevator trim axis, ailerons trim axis, rudder trim axis. You've got engine controls, you've got supercharger, you've got radiator, you've got prop pitch and mixture, and now a lot of that you don't necessarily need. However, uh, things like if you're flying bombers, you know, in simulator, you get one spawn. So if you're flying a B-17 and you take a flak hit in the engine, it's nice to be able to feather the prop on number three. So it's, it's very handy, especially if you have something like one of the Logitech keyboards or one of the other keyboards that has all the gaming keys. You can use a lot of those functions to set up things like prop feathering, magnetos, everything like that, uh, your view controls, all of that. Again, make sure that whatever you're doing while you're doing it, go ahead and save it and back it up. That way you do not lose all the work you just put into manually configuring your stick. It's unfortunate, but with software and especially Steam games are nice because you can go in and you can file check for corruption. But if you have this game installed outside of Steam and you have to uninstall it for whatever reason and then reinstall it, you may have just lost your backup config unless you can save that somewhere else. So you'll save yourself a lot of heartburn simply backing up your control settings. Now, we'll go over a couple of quick things about my personal preferences with the setup and why they are the way they are. I feel like it helps me. So for those of you that have seen me streaming, you'll notice that I fly realistic battles a lot of times with full real controls and the joystick. And a lot of you guys have asked me, hey, why, why are you doing that? That just seems ridiculous. You know, 
I, I do it for a couple of reasons. You know, I'm not just a glutton for punishment or, you know, crazy. You know, we, we won't only say those things. Uh, it's to me, it's a challenge. It keeps me, it keeps me interested in the game because a lot of the realistic battles pilots are mouse pilots. And with a properly configured joystick and good flying, you will fly circles around 99% of mouse pilots. You might not have the aiming skills. However, you are definitely going to have the ability to outmaneuver them at any given point with almost any aircraft, you know, provided that they're even tiered and even battle ratings, but that's another discussion entirely. So for my personal preferences, the biggest one is on the joystick portion down here at the bottom with that tension knob I showed you guys earlier. I actually have it tightened all the way down. And the reason I have it tightened all the way down is I like the fact that I have to use more force to go a direction. It's a more positive reassurance that the motion that I'm taking is indeed the one that I want, and it's going to be accurate. And it also makes fine aiming for things like head-on passes or deflection shooting much, much easier. So that tension is probably my biggest feature that I have for a preference. I can pick up any joystick and play with it with a different button config. One thing I cannot do is pick up a joystick that likes to just wobble around and has no real feedback for the direction I'm going. So all that's really doing is just tightening the spring tension, but it makes a major difference for me. And if you never, you know, say you have this joystick and you've always, you know, you never messed with the tension, give it a try and see if it changes something for you. Another thing I like to do is I separate my cannon and my machine guns. You know, the small caliber guns, <clears throat> pardon me, the small caliber guns I typically use for aiming so that my large caliber guns, i.e. cannons, or, you know, in the case of the P-36, the 50s, are the ones that really hit home and do the damage. You know, with the German aircraft, you don't carry that much cannon ammo. So what it's going to allow me to do is... I can aim, and then once I'm getting those good hits, you know, on the cockpit, the fuselage, the wings, wherever, then I can shoot off a quick cannon burst, and it's it's done. Game over. Thanks for playing. Have a nice day. I, I'm not entirely sure what to do about the rocket button yet. I don't really use rockets. I know a lot of people do. I'm probably going to wind up mapping that to something else. Maybe my uh, additional cannon pods. Uh, some of the cannon pods for the German aircraft wind up with more ammo than the actual cannon loadout or vice versa. So it'd be nice to, you know, if I'm running 30 millimeter cannon pods on the later ones, okay, I'm going to save those for bombers or heavy fighters and the 20 mils are going to be up against fighters. So that is what I have for you for joystick setup. Hopefully I was able to answer your questions or at least point you in the right direction. If you're still having any sort of issues or maybe I didn't answer something, you have a question about one of the settings in the game, feel free to message me, comment on the video, hit me up on Twitter, stop by the stream, and I'd be more than happy to help you out. So for all you future joystick pilots out there or the current ones, good hunting, good luck, and we'll see you in some of the War Thunder lobbies.